Okay, again, welcome. Uh, we're going to open class with prayer today, and then we'll get started. Thanks for your patience as we've, uh, you know, exploring some new ways of connecting with you. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your great goodness to us. Thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us and the opportunity to serve you now in summer 2021 and be together. And we thank you for opening uh, our hearts to your word. And we ask that you would again, through your Holy Spirit, move in us such that we can understand and um, glorify you with our lives and action. Uh, May the Lord be glorified today, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. You know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem during the time of King Herod. Uh, King Herod had a title, King Herod the Great. Actually, Herod was not really a king, and he wasn't really great either. <laughs> he was really kind of miserable and a tyrant, and in terms of quality, he was a, a very difficult king. He executed his own family members when he got threatened by them or felt like he was threatened by them. He executed some of his own children, had them put to death. Come on in. Don't know how. All right. So we were just saying that uh, welcome, come on in, we're this late. is good, this is very good, okay, so we were just saying that King Herod the Great uh, was the pseudo king at the time when Jesus was born. But he wasn't really a king, and he wasn't really great either in terms of quality. And uh, he was actually rather brutal and notorious, having executed his own children, and uh, even notorious among the Roman Empire leadership, as they thought about him there in Jerusalem. And of course, um, it was a very, actually a very dangerous thing for Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. Any idea how close Bethlehem is to... Jerusalem? No. Five or six miles. Oh, so, that's very close. pretty easy walk, you know, a couple hours walk at the most uh, to get there. If you're really in a hurry, you could be there in an hour, mm -hmm. I suppose. So, it was a very dangerous thing. And you know how the events of the wise men took place, where they came from a long way, and then King Herod was there, and how... Uh, God protected both, well, uh, Jesus and his mother Mary and, of course, Joseph as well during that time um, through the dreams. And they went off to Egypt and, and found safety that way. Um, there was a great, you know, as I said earlier, uh, Herod the Great was uh, very jealous, uh, suspicious of people and like that. So it was a, a rivalry there and jealousy uh, uh, and a brutal hunting took place uh, in terms of uh, trying to get Jesus. Uh, this was all prophesied actually with the life and actions and events of King David too. Now we haven't got to the part where he's king yet, but already in his life we see some of this kind of interesting play going on. Uh, we don't want to get too far ahead in the life of David, but I just want you to be aware that really the actions of what happens today has prophetic a meaning for what happened in Jesus' life as well. So, if you have your Bibles, let's look at the appointment of David. Last time it was the anointing of David, and we're going to look at 1 Samuel and chapter 16. So 1 Samuel 16, and we start in verse 14. First Samuel 16, and then start in verse 14. Now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, 
and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Uh, Karen, would you be willing to go on with 15, please? Saul's attendants said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Okay. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the liar. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes on you, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the harp. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine-looking man, and the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them with his son David to Saul. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armor-bearers. Then Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Whenever the Spirit from God came upon Saul, David would take his harp and play. Then relief would come to Saul, he would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. Now it's important for us to recognize that Saul has nothing against David at this point. Uh, but we know how it will end up, uh, or some of us do anyway, that there's this great rivalry that takes place. But uh, there's an important theme throughout this chapter, and that is how David is taken from being a shepherd to becoming a servant to Saul. And David is on the rise while <coughs> Saul is on the decline. decline. Oh, yeah, rapidly. So this appointment uh, to service with Saul is just filled with irony about the whole thing. And in verse 14, uh, it says that the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. But you remember from last week that the anointing of David was also an anointing of the Holy Spirit upon him. And that's an important thing. So we see uh, that the Spirit rushed upon David. And, uh, but it is, uh, well, Saul is, uh, it's departing from Saul. And it's always a very dangerous thing when the Spirit departs. Mm -hmm. And there are other um, indications of that through the prophet Ezekiel uh, departing from the temple. But well, we have to go on a little bit. Uh, so you may have this question then, uh, what does it mean when the Spirit departs from Saul? in terms of his salvation. And there are two lines of thinking about this. One line of thinking is that this is not about salvation at all, that Saul's anointing, uh, the departure of the Spirit, uh, as it says here in my notes, it should be seen as being about gaining or losing the Spirit's empower for the role of king. And so that anointing, uh, he didn't lose his salvation, but it was about uh, his role as king that was removed from him. That's one line of view, and I think that's a, a perfectly acceptable one. But another line of thinking is that Saul, at this point, has so disobeyed the Lord that he has forfeited his good relationship with the Lord, and turned his back on God's salvation, wanting it his own way and wanting uh, and rejecting God's rule for his life. And so it's a very dangerous thing. Having had a taste of salvation, he went the other way and is lost. The book of Hebrews might indicate that this is what's happening with Hebrews chapter 6, 4 through 6, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, we're talking about the Holy Spirit there, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance, because to their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all over again, subjecting him to public disgrace. So this is a very dangerous situation. Um, and this is a little bit of a controversial situation. Different churches, different teachers are going to teach different ways. 
no, you, it's impossible for you to lose your salvation once you've accepted Christ. Um, and then others are going to say, well, it looks like Saul's going the other way and is losing his uh, the spirit. And all Christians are empowered with the Holy Spirit. And so if he is without the Holy Spirit, it looks to me like, uh, like uh, yes, he has turned his back on God. But others have different opinions, so you kind of have to make up your mind. It's a very dangerous thing to turn your back on God's Holy Spirit and to cut yourself off from God. Um, so uh, don't go that way. <laughs> don't be like Saul. Don't, don't push the limits. Um, anyway, uh, it, this is an issue that often comes up in discussing passages where, um, and it, 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 well, anyway, there, we don't want to spend too much more time on that. Okay, so anyway, we see uh, David filled with the Spirit, coming in, and another uh, really controversial aspect of verse 14 is that there is an evil spirit from the Lord that is tormenting Saul. And here we have this very ironic thing that all, Saul has turned his back on the Holy Spirit, but then uh, God allows at the very, at the very least, or permits or actually sends an evil spirit um, out to, uh, uh, to, to, to get after Saul. Now, I think at this point, God is still calling Saul back to himself. But maybe, maybe it's, it's too late. But even Jesus was calling Judas to repent, even when he offered him the bread there at the Lord's Supper. But, of course, as he took it, Satan filled his heart, and he was uh, went off to betray Jesus, and that was the end of it. Uh, I, very ironic uh, that the Holy Spirit, uh, the one with the Holy Spirit, is playing music to help uh, the one who is tormented by an evil spirit from God. So we see the first music therapy, apparently, in the, in the Bible here, and so... Uh, one week too late for your sister to get in on that. Uh, Saul was being dependent already at this point on the one who would succeed him as king. One of the writers points out a name, one of the scholars named Baldwin. So here we have the lyre or the forerunner of the guitar strumming away. Uh, David and and he knows that he's anointed with the Holy Spirit. He knows that he's anointed, going to be the king, and he's right there in the, in the environment of the now reigning king. Very interesting situation for a person to be. Seems like training in process. Yeah. Even if yeah. the Holy Spirit is not part of Saul's life. There are, there are things that Saul is doing that David is going to understand better because he's witnessed them in process. That's absolutely what the writers uh, say is going on in this passage. You're absolutely right. This is training, on-the-job training, taking place. and Very ironic because he's learning all about administration, all about uh, governing of soldiers and, and different things going on um, from someone that Kind of looks like he's mentally ill, <laughs> but he's on his way out. And David does get that training that he would not have had with the sheep. Now, there were some things that he could have learned from the sheep, so that was very good, too. And there were some things that Moses had learned, remember? Shepherding. So there's continuity that way, too. Um, but overall, the theme is what? The Lord is in control here. And David may look like he's in trouble, but he's actually in the grip of God, in the, the Holy Spirit protecting him. Just the same way later, Jesus, born in Bethlehem, probably, you know, if we were to select all those things, we wouldn't say, oh yeah, why don't you be born next to a tyrant? Um, but Jesus was safe. David is completely safe as long as he has God's favor, the Holy Spirit there, with anointing him. And 
we'll get to application, but you can see that you are safe also whenever you have the Holy Spirit. No matter what kind of evil is out there, you are safe if you're where God wants you to be in his will with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, so uh, David, uh, even at this point, Saul loves David. Verse 21, and the Lord would later replace him, uh, with Saul, but uh, here David is finding favor. He's good music, uh, he's maybe even composing some of the Psalms at this point. We don't really know. Uh, young guy, uh, worship and praise music is a part of court life there and he's learning all of this he's perhaps composing it himself and we can see the value too of worship and praise music in our lives in every day and it can help us too just by way of incident to uh, stress reliever you know when we're praising the Lord it's a little more difficult to be worried about things <laughs> so uh, make music a part of your way uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 45, 5 through 7. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well being and create calamity. There's a verse to challenge us. I am the Lord who does all these things. So that kind of answers the question, how could God send out an evil spirit? Yeah, he says, I make well-being and create calamity. This really challenges our understanding of the Lord. A lot of people think, well, the Lord doesn't really, you know, he's not really in charge things. He, they just kind of come up and he fixes it. No, no, he's permitting these things to happen, even creating calamity. This is really a challenge to us when we think about it and the Lord's character and how he works all things for good. He's so much more. We can't put him in a little box. He's so much more than we could ever understand. Well, as I said before, David's in a dangerous position by human accounts in the court and but he and because he's in the presence of Saul, but he's safe because he is the Lord's anointed. And the Lord would watch over David over and over and again through his life. And here again, we have an instance of where a man looks at the outward appearance, or people do, and say, oh, David, he's in a dangerous position. Like, I've kind of put you in that position uh, in thinking that way. But uh, how dangerous is it? God sees, and he knows, and he's in full control, and he's anointed David, and David is not going to die. <laughs> He's got that in his back pocket, so to speak. He's anointed. But he's not going to become king for many, many years. Uh, we lost our connection. Uh, anyway, we'll have to continue with the YouTube. So, just uh, in the last five minutes... Yeah, we'll try to get this started again. That was... Yeah, yeah, we just... Yeah, it's, it's not right up yet, unfortunately. So, we want to review some of the important themes. Man looks at the outward appearance, but... Chapter? God looks at the heart. Yeah. And that carries through not only the first part about David's outward appearance as a shepherd boy, but at, negatively at Saul and his heart, and then his turning away. Uh, but also for us, too, in our appearance, we can look around the outside and we can say, oh, well, there's all this COVID, there's all this danger, there's all this... And they're real, but nothing is going to harm your... Uh, your walk with the Lord if you stay with him and that's ultimate salvation nothing's going to take it, Jesus is stronger than COVID Jesus is stronger than death Jesus is stronger than anything we may face so again you might think you're in danger but and then go to all anxiety and stress over things 
But maybe the Lord has put you in a certain spot for his purpose, and you're not in a dangerous spot at all. Uh, we've seen again, the Lord looks on the heart. Another application, the Lord chooses unlikely people for important purposes. Okay, uh, we want to review that too. And I think the section here, the Lord is in control. And uh, while the Lord is not the author of evil, the Lord has even the evil spirits in his control. And so, uh, you know, we'll try to uh, keep... All right, it looks like it's, it's restarting now, so I don't have to do anything. Uh, the Lord has even the demons, even the evil spirits at his disposal for his purposes. And God has placed you in a strategic position and place to do his will. So there's no need to be afraid. Because if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you have the same anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Maybe not for king, being king, but for doing his purposes, the Lord's purposes. And you will be kept safe forever and in the keeping of the Lord because of the power of the Lord. And with God's help and direction, uh, you will do more good than your enemies will do harm. And that's a great promise there, I think, from our passage as well. Oh, we're seeing some comments on here that I didn't have access to earlier. So good morning to you. If uh, Rochelle and Dave are on here, all uh, right, yes, celebrating anniversary this week. Uh, so happy anniversary. Uh, also seeing Missy on this morning too, Missy Worley. So good morning and uh, happy that you're on as well. Uh, hope, hope we're still going here on this. <laughs> I don't know doesn't look like it. It's just so difficult. All right, anything more you want to talk about with this passage then? It says a lot about music, and, and you already touched on it, but music is one of those things that is part of my world. I grew up with it, so having music on is a calming effect for me very, very often, and I don't think the Holy Spirit has left me, but it's calming for Christians as well as people who are um, maybe not Christians or who are in difficult places. Very interesting how we can bring through music uh, a healing presence to a world that is not in peace and kind of offer that musical witness or just maybe even just your presence in the room can bring peace to that room. Yeah. Yes, and that is a witness that is a way that um, uh, that we're, we're on mission really in the world right now. And there's something about having the Holy Spirit that when you come in, people can tell there's something different. There's something different. And they can explore that, or they can reject that and just don't think about it. But there's a witness there. There's a decision that has been made. And if they explore that, then there's an opportunity to witness with words about why, why, why are you at peace about all this? Thank you. And music can do that too. Yes. All right, anything more before we conclude here? Good to have you joining us today too. <laughs> All right, let's close with prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you for giving us this chance to consider again the anointing of the Holy Spirit on people. We thank you for the gift of salvation and the gift of your spirit and the gift of uh, the fruit of the spirit that uh, transforms what we have and our talents into something much more than what we could even uh, dream about. Uh, David, of course, was uh, in training and led along that way and would uh, 
be his words, his songs would later become Bible scripture. And we see the power not only for anointing for king, but for uh, anointing for uh, speaking and witnessing and prophesying the word of God. And we ask, Lord, that many might receive that power of God, the Holy Spirit, on their lives uh, to be dramatic witnesses using their talents and gifts and resources for the Lord in ways in which you are glorified. Keep your people safe in terms of all eternity. Keep them close to you. And call others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, have a good day. God bless you. Stay close to him.